Good evening, everyone. I'm Scott Maloney. I'll be your instructor for this course. We'll get to syllabi in a moment, but before we begin in earnest, I want to take a moment to ask a fundamental question. Why are we here? Besides the obvious? Now, like all professors, I'd like to imagine that there are some of you who are really excited to take this course. And I know many of you will swiftly disabuse me of that particular fantasy. So I imagine most of you will need some convincing. I hope you'll indulge me to try. As I see it, aside from my fellow nerds, there are broadly three objections that you would have to taking the theology class. Let me answer them one at a time. The first objection goes something like this. Mr. Maloney, religion is utter nonsense. It's held me and my country back. Its doctrines are atavistic and retrograde impulses of our reptile brains. You, Mr. Maloney, are a fool to have studied it, and this entire course is a waste of time. Now, my first reply is to quote a famous American politician and say, that hurts my feelings. But more seriously, even if you share none of my convictions, there is one point that we should both agree on. Alongside economics, politics, and the law, one of the most potent forces in any society is religion. From domestic politics here in the Philippines, to tensions between two of the largest Muslim states on Earth, to some truly terrifying people to attempting to run my country, there are many phenomena that you can't understand without understanding religion. You may find no wisdom in our subject whatsoever. You may join with Nietzsche in proclaiming that God is dead and we have killed him. But unless you understand religion on its own terms, you cannot understand an enormous number of things that are going on around you. You will be the future leaders of your country. And you cannot lead your country unless you understand the forces at work within the country. Now, a second objection to the theology course takes an opposite tack. You would say something like, Mr. Maloney, I've grown up in one of the most devoutly religious countries on the planet. I've attended Catholic school since I could crawl. Religion classes have always been a part of my education, and I've been duly confirmed. I know all my prayers, and I can recite the catechism with the best of them. With respect, Mr. Maloney, what could you possibly tell me that I haven't already heard? To this, I must first commend you for paying attention for 12 years of Catholic education. I was publicly educated, and I have no doubt that your Catholic education was harder. But there is a crucial difference between your Catholic education up until this point and what we're doing in this classroom. You prepared to become part of a religious community, whether that's a parish or a congregation or a local mosque. Each of those communities has a different way of worshiping, and you've learned how to be a participating member of that community. That's great, and it is explicitly not what we're doing in this classroom. This class is designed both to impart facts, who St. Augustine was, say, and why he loathed a British monk named Pelagius. But this course is also going to teach you skills, how to reflect critically on St. Augustine's confessions, and whether he or St. Thomas has a more authentic articulation of grace. Our subjects for examination will include the most scrutinized text in human history, and an intellectual and spiritual tradition that spans two millennia, which builds upon another tradition which is at least a millennium older than that. A friend of mine in grad school did an entire master's thesis on one word in the Hebrew Bible. Rest assured, friends, this rabbit hole runs deep. Finally, a third group of you are probably asking something different. You're probably saying something along the lines of, Mr. Maloney, I'm not really sure what I believe. I'm struggling with some really big questions right now. Who am I? What am I supposed to do? Is religion going to be a part of my life? 
I might be interested in what you have to say, but if this devolves into a thrice weekly sermon, wherein you try and convince me that the church, or even worse, you, are always right, then please forgive me if I don't often show up. To those of you who say this, I can only say, welcome. I should make it clear that this course is not designed to incline you toward one creed or another. I am not here to make you agree with anyone, least of all me. While I hope you take even what I tell you with appropriate skepticism, I'm going to try and mark my opinions and judgments very clearly. Let me be clear. Theology is not a soft or squishy science. There are wrong answers. Ones that are lazy, ones that are glib, and ones that are inhumane. But theology often does have room for multiple correct answers from people of goodwill. Neither I nor any of your other theology instructors will penalize you for your religious tradition, for your religious stance, or your lack of either. We will, however, challenge you to put those beliefs under a rigorous microscope. If philosophers echo Socrates, who said that the unexamined life is not worth living, then theologians echo St. Anselm of Canterbury, who proclaimed theology to be fides quarens intellectum, faith seeking understanding. My goal at the end of this class is that you will have given time to introspection, and that you were able to reaffirm those beliefs which have stood up to scrutiny and abandon those which have not. One of the major facets of Jesuit education, as articulated by St. Ignatius himself, is cura personalis, the care of the whole person. The thrust of a liberal arts education is not merely to train you to become a productive member of society. It's meant to leave you a qualitatively better person when you leave my classroom than when you enter it. I hope you'll take the opportunity that this class affords you to become that better person. Thank you.